Hello, denizens of the internet. This video comes by way of inspiration from the Film Threat channel, where they digested an article from The Hollywood Reporter lamenting the massive downturn in work for TV writers. I'm scared. Why it's a brutal time to be a TV writer, the end of peak TV has ushered in an era of contraction with fewer buyers, farewell to the CW, and fierce competition for the few shows that are staffing. People are in total survival mode by Leslie Goldberg. So I'm not going to bother going through the article. Chris and Alan have done a great job. I'll leave a link uh, to their video below. What I want to talk about is the utter mismanagement that has gotten us here. And let me tell you, it's a story of hubris, greed, stupidity, and a dash of technology that no one understands in Hollywood. So stay tuned. It's going to be a bumpy ride. You could accuse me of wearing 2020 hindsight glasses, but there were clear indications even back then that this was utter folly. And I said as much from a technology perspective, because that's my background. We also have the evidence of past attempts to own the streaming business back before the internet was much of a thing. And I'll get to that. In a nutshell, it's all Netflix's fault. They became successful. And we all know what that means. Others wanted some of that streaming gold, although uh, there wasn't a lot of gold in them darn, darn hills at the time. Just lots of red ink. But it seems the studios aren't afraid of piling on the debt uh, because they were scared that Netflix would dominate the streaming market. It wasn't bad enough that NBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox ignored the emerging threat from the cable channels like HBO and Showtime that started the slow decline in scripted network shows and uh, who then rushed into the arms of reali the reality show heroin merchants. The networks, uh, including cable itself, now have to deal with the shrinking market due to cable cutters tired of paying hundreds of dollars a month for bundled channels they don't want. Of course, the solution is a fragmented array of streaming services that ends up costing the same as the cable subscription. That's the way to get an audience back. But I'm jumping ahead of myself. Netflix's streaming service started in 2007 and House of Cards debuted in, two, in 2013. In 2008, Hulu.com launched as a joint venture between AOL, Comcast, uh, Facebook, MSN, and, uh, and MySpace, and Yahoo. NBC was the first of the content distributors to join. Uh, Fox quickly followed suit and, and it was clearly a huge win for MySpace. Simply put, when it came to Hulu's birth, a bunch of Hollywood executives saw the potential in streaming. They saw a way to make money off of older and eventually newer television shows. And that made sense. That's what made Hulu successful. And they were right. As cutting the cord became more and more popular, maybe things wouldn't be in such a bad mess if everyone had let Netflix be Netflix and the networks all just supported Hulu. But that would have made sense. And, and collaboration is a bad word when you're trying to protect your own intellectual property turf. So now we have way too many goddamn streaming services, most not making any money, an audience of cable cutters facing increased expenses supporting all these channels thinking, didn't I just leave all this crap a few years ago? Now, running a network isn't free, but broadcast towers and satellites were a nominal expense that they were used to paying. And the cable companies actually paid a license fee to include the networks on their service. Unfortunately, streaming requires a server infrastructure that costs money or the use of cloud services like Azure, Google's, or AWS that also costs money. Perhaps the studios forgot that storage and bandwidth costs money. The pre-Google YouTube was burning through a million dollars a month in bandwidth fees alone. The monthly subscription one-size-fits-all deal only worked if you were adding subscribers at a ferocious pace 
and gaining more than you lost. In fact, the ideal scenario for streamers is to add subscribers and then hope they don't watch anything. <laughs> it's clever, eh? Maybe that's why Paramount Plus uh, was happy Star Trek Discovery was so wretchedly awful. At least there would be no bandwidth charges. The Silicon Tech era brought with it fear of not being first to market, or at the very least, fear of not joining soon enough. Back before the internet, Warners experimented with a proprietary wired neighborhood that offered movies on demand, but the technology was not ready yet, and Warners spent billions on a failed effort. Being first didn't help Warners. Netflix happened to be at the right place at the right time. But even back then, I believe the single fee subscription model was not sustainable. Yet the studios with their proven advertising based model made a huge failed bet on streaming and lost at least half of their network audience because they stopped developing original shows at the same historic pace and volume. Instead, streamers made six to 10 episodes of a show every year or maybe every two years if you were if you were lucky facing the reality that the monthly subscription model didn't work and seeing upstarts like the free pluto and and tubi's advertising based services succeeding the network streaming bastard children are now rushing to add discounted subscriptions that include advertising so the networks managed to take a simple easy to digest, easy to manage broadcast system and spent billions of dollars to make it worse, resulting in a shrunken market for their product and pushing people to YouTube. And this doesn't even include the complete lack of synergy between ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox and their bastard children. Disney played off their failed Ms. Marvel series on ABC owned by Disney. Uh, that, that's not synergy. That was desperation. The networks have come full circle, adding advertising to streaming, and now have a worse version of the model that they started with, with a much smaller audience. <laughs> Brilliant. And don't we all love the network apps that require proof of having a cable subscription? Fewer shows, erratic schedule, commercials, and The Masked Singer. Your resources are already limited and you're making shows that competes with the shows on your own network? Absolutely fucking brilliant. Just think if you had spent the billions on scripted shows and then eventually just let Netflix buy them. It might not be such a bad thing that fewer shows are being made. As Grant Tinker said, the problem with TV is that there's too much of it. But Hollywood's number one priority must be to end the infighting and make it as easy for us, the consumer, to find your shows and movies. Vertical fragmentation along silos like, you know, the Food Channel, Sci-Fi Network, uh, Home Renovation Channels, well, I mean, that still makes sense. But for all intents and purposes, uh, Netflix, Amazon, HBO, Apple are, are basically the same service. The network's market has been shrinking, where only retirees in Arizona are watching The Voice Big Brother and Dancing with the Stars. Sports seems to be the last narrow ledge that they are holding onto for dear life. I honestly believe we are starved for shows like Designing Women, Soap, Baywatch, A-Team, Love Boat, Dallas, Cheers, The Good Night Court, not the shitty one they have on now, no one is making classic network shows anymore. And as it happens, the classic network shows are the highest rated shows on the streaming services. In all deference to the cable and streaming companies, getting the networks back to some semblance of their former success, I think is a win for everyone. And do you know what else it will do? Get work for writers. Till next time, denizens, be seeing you.